Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today we're taking a real quick look at another Tandy Radio Shack Model 200. Now, I originally was not going to do a video on this guy because I thought it was just going to be another recap and a new memory battery like we did on the last one. But this had an interesting little problem that I thought we would take a look at. So I shot some quick uh, video footage along the way. So it may not be as good as one of my normal videos, but I thought the problem and the solution was worth sharing with everybody. So in case you have a Model 200 with the same type problem, maybe it'll help you out. So let's dive into that video footage and see what the problem was and see what the solution is. This is a quick addendum to the Model 200 video I did a few weeks ago where the complaint was it would not turn on. Did somebody else send me one of these and figured it needed a recap and a new battery, and it sure does need a new battery. Uh, but it wouldn't turn on. Sometimes if I power cycled it and whatnot, took the batteries in and out, you know, held my mouth just right, it would turn on and the screen looked okay. So I started with simple things first and looked at the power switch, which was here on the keyboard. And I ohmed out the contacts, and it wasn't making really good contact, so I desoldered it. And I cleaned it with some of this deoxit, put a few drips in there, punched the button in and out several times, give it a few minutes to dry up, and ohmed out the switch on all four contacts, and that was making really good contact now, dead short. But it still wasn't turning on. So then I took, and there's only three traces on here that are used, and I ohmed out all three traces, which kind of wind around the outside here like this, up to this ribbon connector. And this top one, which is pin 4 on the switch, is fi fine. Pin 5 on the switch was fine, but pin 6, when I got to it, and I got to the right spot on the ribbon connector here, there was nothing. And I noticed there was kind of a little funky looking spot right here. So I've got a sharp probe here and I touched it right before that funky looking spot and there's a good connection. And then I did it right after and it's open. So we've got an open trace right there and I'm going to have to take a look with the keyboard in to see what that might have rubbed up against. If we take a peek at the service manual we can see the power switch shown here on the keyboard and these three wires are the ones we looked at a couple of which were damaged and you see they don't have anything to do with the key matrix which is providing a power signal here and if we take a look at the block diagram of the power control circuit we can see where that power signal comes in there's some other electronics in here that uh, turns things on and off handles the reset etc and, but if we look at that memory power switch, that's an actual physical switch that cuts power going into the power supply section over here, as well as from the memory battery to the memory. So you can think of the memory power switch as sort of like a master uh, power switch to everything, and the power button that's on the keyboard is a soft switch. So these three traces from the outside are the ones to the switch and you can see this spot right here which looks a little green and crusty. That is where it is broken. That's the one for the normally open contact of the switch. Uh, this one's common and this is the normally closed contact. So I'll scrape those down and clean them and there's a few other sp spots that I will check along the back side of the board. There we go, that looks a little suspicious. And in here. So I have to look at all those. And the switch looks rather crusty if I can find it. Because I desoldered it and soldered it back in, so I have to clean that all up. But the switch is actually fine now that it was clean. Okay, here's the broken trace. I've scraped the 
silk screen off there and there's a little abrasion or something here you can see kind of the green from the silk screen on my screwdriver there but the break is definitely in that trace there and I set this like this because this is the area that that might rub against right here so I don't know if that's just years of typing and bearing down on here and it's kind of rubbed the silk screen off that could very well be I thought maybe you know the wires might have got pinched in here and that did it but I don't see any abrasion on the wires so I'm guessing maybe it's just years of use and this part of the PCB was rubbing on here although looking at this part I can't really see anything that looks like rubbing but it wouldn't take a lot uh, the other spots around here I thought might have been suspicious those were just fine they put some type of weird conformal coating on these boards that's what all this nasty looking stuff is or it's flux residue from how they were soldered it's a pain to clean off but it doesn't hurt anything so I just cleaned it off these areas I'll go ahead and tin these uh, clean them up again and then uh, coat them with some fingernail polish to protect them and on this area since this is a rather decent break um, I'll bridge that with a very fine wire clean it up nail polish and then I'll put some cat tan tape over that where it might rub looking over at the area where the keyboard might rub on the other side you can see where it's kind of been rubbing against the the bottom of the keyboard so it's something to keep in mind for all you other model 200 owners and you can kind of see the condition the battery's in it's getting rather crusty and swollen though it doesn't look like it's leaked much down onto the circuit board okay I'm going to do my old standard here and apply some flux to these areas. This one doesn't look like there's any abrasion there, so I'm not going to flux that. Here I'm applying just a tiny bit of solder and then dragging it along the uh, bare scrape trace. Just wanting to tin the trace here, not really add a big buildup. I'm doing the same thing on that other side where the brake actually is. I clean off the soldering iron tip and go back over it to remove any excess. Okay. A very fine piece of strand wire from a multi-conductor cable. And it's already, I've tinned the traces here, and this wire is already tinned, so I'm just going to quickly tack one end in place, which you can't see because of my finger there. on there. I'm kind of holding the tail end of the wire with my finger. I'm going to tip down the other end of it. I'm taking my really fine small side cutters. Get that off there. Make sure that is down in place. Now well, this end could have been a little more this way, but it's okay. Okay, now I'm just going to put a dab of solder on my iron there. I'll hold this wire with the screwdriver. Wipe some more solder 
up to one end, to the other end, and now we've got a good repair. That looks nice. So here is a close-up of a repair. Now from this angle, the middle and the back traces have the wires bridging them. You can really see the profile of the wires right there. If you kind of look more from the top, you can see they are indeed separated. And this one over here. We just tend. Those are really in good shape. I've got a little nail polish here that my daughter donated to the cause. It's black instead of green, but it will do a good job of protecting these areas. Okay, now I'll just let that set up overnight to make sure it's good and cured. And then we'll get the board recapped, do a little bit of cleanup, and see if that takes care of it. Okay, so got it mostly back together. Pop this keyboard off of here and show you what I did. Uh, recapped it new memory battery and I figured out that these spots here and here and here uh, that had been somewhat damaged this is where the traces were a couple traces were worn through and these were just scuffed up a little bit not too bad but what's happening is the circuit board is resting on these areas here that I've covered in cap tan tape and I put a couple layers there over my trace repair and just some on that area there as well so that should make it last another 30 or 35 years this keyboard just sits down there like that and there's these three spacers that go down onto the circuit board but there's no, no traces right under those so no danger of those wearing through any things now we just need to put it back together and test it out. So, oops. Again, the keyboard first. Get my head out of your way. back in place. Just checking it all around the seams. Okay. And there are four of these that have a little paint on them, which is for the LCD. These other fours are for the bottom cover. Remember counterclockwise just a bit until you feel a screw drop and start it clockwise. did clean between the LCD and the plastic 
Although the plastic's a little scuffed up on front, which I couldn't do anything about. And that kind of screws here. The longer ones go through the metal bits and the shorter ones don't. Don't like how it's fitting together. Okay, there we go. Got a little catch there in the center. It's kind of hard to hold that up in position while starting the screws. Nail and polish on there to lock those in place. Before. This is kind of hard to film this LCD because it's not super great in real life. But let's see our power switch works. So our trace repair still doing fine. We've got good contrast for this sort of LCD. And if we go into basic. Like our keyboard's working fine. It works. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this small look at another TRS-80 Bonnell 200. I didn't realize when I worked on the first one that the circuit board was actually rubbing on those plastic supports under there. So I think it's probably a good idea in the future to inspect that uh, bottom of the keyboard circuit board more closely and go ahead and apply some cat tam tape or something similar there uh, to keep that firm abrading and wearing through the traces like we saw on this guy. Now, I've replaced the caps in the memory battery. I took the battery out. Eric, battery out. <laughs> I replaced the caps on this guy and the memory battery. And I let the memory battery charge up all night off of the double A's. And then I took the double A's out for about 10 minutes and put them back in and still had the little basic program that I put in memory. So. We know everything's working. I've checked all the keys on the keyboard. All that seems fine. So I think this one's ready to send back to its owner. Thanks again for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, look for that rectangular subscribe button down below and click on that guy. And right beside it, there is a bell-shaped icon. And if you click on that, you'll be notified just as soon as I post a video. I'd appreciate it if you'd click on both of those. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, just leave them in the comments section down below. Until next time, bye.